So no matter what your plan is, whether you have an organizational quality assurance plan, whether you have a, st a study that does have a sponsor and you've got the sponsor coming in as part of their monitoring plan, or the FDA shows up and wants to inspect, you know, um, do an investigator inspection, not for cause, maybe for cause, but maybe just part of routine. Maybe it's a newer investigator who is um, holding an IND. They want to, maybe they just want to do some, you know, proactive education and training. So regardless of what type of visit, if you will, um, you have, you really prepare the same way for them. And the first thing is you try to stay calm. And remember, there's probably someone who you can ask questions of and get assistance from, okay? You're never in it alone. And so one of the things that um, you would want to do is do a regulatory review. You'd want to review and make sure you had all versions of the protocol available, um, as well as the approvals, any IRB correspondence related to unanticipated problem reporting or issues of non-compliance. You want to make sure you have all the original consents, whether they're allowed to be part of the medical record or if they're a part of the research record. You want to make sure that all of the signatures are in order and all the dates are the same per whatever the institutional policy is. Um, all of these documents um, are maintained often in some type of a regulatory binder or a regulatory file. So you basically are doing a quality control check on that file. If it's applicable because it is an IND study, you want to make sure you have all versions of the investigator brochure, all versions of the uh, statement of the investigator, also known as the Form 1572, want to make sure you have CVs for all of the investigators and key research personnel, um, licenses certainly of the PI or the MD who is medically accountable, if financial disclosures are appropriate um, in terms of the FDA regulations, those need to be there. Want to make sure you have all of your lab CLIA certifications as well as connections to the reference ranges any sponsor correspondence, um, the uh, delegation of responsibilities or the signature log. So what is the PI delegating what specific research procedures to? Um, and so you kind of want to do that regulatory review. Make sure you have everything in order. You also want to do a source document review. So your source documents can be either a medical record or they can also be research records. Maybe there's quality of life surveys that aren't going to be put into a medical record for a patient um, participant. And so those will be kept in um, a research record somewhere. You want to make sure you have all of those source documents because they're going to come most likely and look at those source documents against some data element, some data that needs to be collected for the study. If you have anything missing, you want to try to secure it. And if you can't secure it, you want to do some type of a note to your regulatory file to explain why not. Okay, so you just want to make sure that everything is above board and you're not trying to hide anything. Um, there are some sponsors who will want things like procedure reports. So radiology reports, um, EKGs, or laboratory reports signed by the PI as evidence that the PI has reviewed those. So that will be very sponsor specific. Um, but it is something, again, that can catch people off guard. You also want to look then at your data collection tool, so your case report form. You want to make sure that they're all complete, they're accurate, and they're up to date. And particularly for um, clinical trials, you want to look at your adverse events, your concomitant medications, your study medications, and anything that assesses response. So you want to make sure you have all of that data complete in the case report form, as well as in your source documents. 
Again, if you have a drug trial, whether that trial is conducted under an investigational new drug application or not, you want to make sure that the pharmacy has accurate dispensing records um, as well as drug inventory records. Okay, and if there's anything missing, you want to make sure that um, there's some type of a note to the file to address whatever these discrepancies are. So again, this would be, you know, for IND or non-IND trials. So what are some tips to help um, in terms of preparing for these visits? So the first thing is you, gotta, you, you need to get a room, and that is not the easiest thing in most places, is to find a room for whoever is coming to audit, monitor, or inspect. So the first thing is getting a room. Um, within the NIH intramural program, we do have a regulatory audit guideline as well as an audit scheduling form, and we do have procedures and processes for that to take place. In the intramural program, all of this is coordinated through medical legal in the medical records department. Um, for those of you that are listening online, you will need to see what your organization's processes are for securing a room and securing access to the medical record. If you have an electronic medical record and you have the ability to assign the monitor, auditor, inspector, a access, temporary access to the records that they would like to review, that should be done. If not, you need to print everything out. And ideally, it should be a certified copy, and that really starts to get into um, a lot of extra work um, for research teams and others. If, you, if this is a drug study, then you want to make sure that the pharmacy is aware of that and maybe pre-schedule an appointment time that would be convenient for them, knowing what their schedule um, is like. Mornings sometimes are a little more harried than the afternoon. You wanna make sure that the PI is available and anybody else that the um, monitor or inspector wants to see. It's not uncommon for a research team to have more than one visit at a time and so it'd be important for proprietary reasons as well as confidentiality to keep those visits in separate rooms, okay? You wanna make sure that all of the source documents, if the case report forms are on paper versus through an electronic system, that they're all available as well as the regulatory documents. You want to provide only what they want to inspect. So if they, if your sponsor says we're coming for a monitoring visit and we want to review patients 4, 9, and 15, don't say, well, I also have 16 ready. Would you like to see that one too? Just give them what they've asked for, okay? No more, no less. You may need to, if, there, if it's the um, individual's first time coming to your facility, you want to make, greet them in sort of a central place because they may not be able to make their way back to the particular room where all of the, um, where the uh, audit will occur. You want to make sure you've reviewed the format of the medical record for them as well as a format for the research um, record if you have a large number of documents that will be found in the research record. You know, some of these are just niceties, but if you plan ahead and you prepare, then, you know, the person coming, that inspector, auditor, monitor, is going to think that you're really on the ball and you really know what's going on. And that can go a long way to making their visit easier on them, which makes it easier on you in turn. Orient them to the area where the bathroom is, where a phone is. Um, also confirm when, you know, that you had set up a time to meet with the PI, with the pharmacy if applicable, and a confirm that those are still good for everybody involved. Unless it's the FDA that's coming, you don't need to stay there with the monitor the whole time, 
okay? They need to do their job. It's not always fun having somebody look over your shoulder. So just plan to maybe have some predefined times that you'll be able to check in with them in case they have questions or how to get in touch with you. So either a pager or you know cell phone number, office number, um, which they should have any have had anyway. If it's their first time in their meeting, the investigator in their office, or the first time to the pharmacy, if that's applicable for one of these quality visits, then you want to make sure you do escort them there. You also want to leave time to make corrections to the case report forms. And if you are having the same individual inspecting multiple days in a row, you want to make sure then that the records are kept, you know, in a lock room. And certainly for us, the medical records, uh, medical legal, you know, really handles that for us. So we don't always have to keep taking like the, regula the regulatory records or some of the um, research records back and forth. They're able to stay in um, medical records. So again, no matter what type of quality management plan there is, some of the most common deficiencies um, are here on the slide. Failing to follow the protocol. So protocol says that a procedure has to be done at a certain time point and it's not done at that time point. That still becomes the most, one of the most common deficiencies um, whether it be the organization's QA plan or the sponsor's plan. So follow the protocol. For those of us that have the opportunity to work on investigator-initiated studies, the investigator has some control in that. I always say think about building in wiggle room to avoid failing to follow the protocol. So if safety is not going to be compromised and you can draw safety blood work um, you know, within a date range, so day eight plus or minus two days, that will um, have you not deviate from your protocol uh, dramatically. So you will be able to adhere to the protocol. Um, for some clinical trials, you also want to take into consideration if the participant's going to be on for a while, they may want to go on vacation. So how do you build in maybe missed timings because they want to go on a vacation? So how does that get incorporated into the protocol itself? So just some things to think about um, for those who do have impact in how a protocol is actually written. The other common deficiency is failing to keep adequate and accurate records. So this is really looking at your source documents. So we don't have um, thorough medical records or we don't have thorough research records. Things are missing. Um, and again, we do have a bit of control over that. And again, it may just be an issue of training and education. Um, there are often problems with the informed consent form. The FDA particularly finds this an issue. Um, they'll find a missing mandatory element. There's eight of them. I'm not sure how you miss one of them, but um, that is found. Also, you may find issues with the informed consent process itself. Uh, failing to report adverse events is also another um, concern a common deficiency and again I don't think that this is done intentionally I think that sorting through a lot of this documentation to pull out those adverse events and to understand the definition of what an adverse event is which is regardless of expectedness or attribution I think that sometimes why failing to report adverse events um, whether it be routinely or expeditiously can be a problem. And then finally, for our drug trials, um, failing to account for accurate drug dispensing records can also be a, a, a problem.